I think the hope is, Lenise, that people will disperse on their own. There you see Chief Batiste talking with a group of people right now. Let's listen in if we can hear him, please. I got shot at the shot. Commander Graves over my union, he said this, thank the officer that was there that applied pressure to my wound to save my life. Now, that's what 90 to 95 percent of my officers do every day. Every now and then we have a situation where something negative happens. We don't run around asking for a pat on the back. We do our job and we do it selflessly every day. I was here from the beginning to the end. I don't believe in serving sitting in the castle. I serve amongst the people. I am out here to answer your questions. And but let me go ahead and say this. I appreciate you for being out here. I appreciate all your officers. I appreciate all your hard work that you've been doing for the city. But also let me ask you this one question. What can you also honestly say? Have you also been putting forth effort and uh, you know, just really plan, trying to plan out, okay, what can I do as, you know, me personally, what can I do to stop this? What can I do to, you know, prevent my, 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 uh, my department, it, my officers from becoming just like Minneapolis? Because right now, we're just one death away. Matter of fact, not even one death away. This could, this could be Minneapolis. That building right there, the RSA Tower, can be burned down by tomorrow. What can I, I mean, how, as you, as a police chief, how can you say that, how are you, what are you doing to calm the, to calm these people? What can, what are you doing to reassure that your officers won't step out the line? What are you, I mean, can you honestly say that none of your officers will step out the line? And, and when they do, will they be disciplined just as much as a civilian will? Me and you. Well, are, well, I, I can say this, if, if my officers violate policy, if they break the law, then yes, I will hold them accountable. Again, I don't know if you've paid attention to the to the media in the last month, but we've had officers arrested. Mm -hmm. That's because we did our job. We did our investigation, and we submitted that paperwork to the district attorney's office, and they've taken the approach to address that. Uh, as it relates to what are we going to do in relationship to trying to make sure that people know that they're being heard, just like what I'm doing right now. I'm sitting here, I'm listening to you. You're listening to me. And because we're listening to one another, we're having open dialogue. You understand? Mm. But too often times, we talk at each other and not to each other. Correct. And so uh, until we're able to sit across the table, me and you, or whoever else here that may be leading a group, is willing to sit across the table and have open dialogue, we're not going to have it. I have consistently, and it started with my predecessor, have consistently tried to create pathways and avenues for us to have dialogue with young people in this community and older people in this community. And the goal is this, when you get invited to the table, you have to come. You can't wait till there's a crisis and then we're having dialogue. Dialogue should be created before there's a crisis so that when the crisis arrives, you already have the confidence that I'm going to do what I said, what I should do as a police chief. You get what I'm saying? If it involves one of my officers. Likewise, I can have the confidence of knowing that if it happened in your back. Okay, we've got some. Right, I, I do have a I question for you. The officer that was suspended. It's, I think it's something going it's on. A, it's a truck. Yeah. Okay. Got stuck. Okay. It's not. Okay. Okay. There's a truck that got stuck. All right. So the officer that was suspended. What? What? Like what? What? A uh, training or psych psych evaluations. What did y'all do to prepare him to be back on the streets for that? Now, now you know I can't sit here and tell you. About yeah, we. Well, I mean, seriously, how acceptable? What, what I would tell you is this: is that in every. In I mean, every, we we actually I'm, should I'm, know I'm, what y'all do though. Well, yeah, I think that's a zero tolerance rule for that type of stuff. Zero tolerance rule for that type of like. So, so what I'll say is this: is I don't know who you are. I don't understand. I'm I'm going to say that. I need you to come to my office. Yeah. And we're going to have a serious conversation about what our policy and procedure would be in a situation where we would have an officer involved shooting. So you'll have an idea of what would actually take place. No, this see, this is what I'm saying. All right. So, uh, officer use excessive use, excessive force. We are yeah. still listening in on the conversation that uh, Chief Batiste is having like, with a citizen who was part of this march today. But unfortunately, our, our, our close-up picture froze. We're taking a little longer view, but 
I believe he's in that group that you see right there to the left of the uh, Mardi Gras statue talking with people. And what he was saying just a few minutes ago, he said, this is good, having this kind of this conversation, just you and me talking. And just seconds ago, he said, I want you to, there we go, I just want you to come to my office and we're going to talk some more. There we go. So let's get back to this. And he's still dragging me outside the, uh, using major excessive mm -hmm. force. That should be zero tolerance when you so look I, at that. What I tell people is this here. No yeah. investigation, no internal affairs, none that, of that. that there, there should never be a time when somebody is dismissed from a job or even brought up on criminal charges without an investigation. You don't go to jail. Um, you don't go to jail without the opportunity of being able to Anybody defend yourself water? in court. We got some. Excuse me. Where's that? Mm -hmm. We got it. But when you do have the opportunity to defend yourself, you get an opportunity to present a case. Got I got that. I appreciate it. Present a case about what actually took place. You can't come up with hypothetical situations and say this is I mean, what ought to happen. Okay, okay, hold on. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me get this. Let me get this. This real is an actual situation. So, but you're peaking. So you're, you're peaking we're avoiding the actual cases. situation and talk about hypotheticals. Well, I know you're addressing him right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You talk about a hypothetical. Let's talk yeah. about something that, right. that actually come on, happened. Come on, come on. So in the case of what happened with him, what what steps did y'all take to assure that he was he was able to handle the public again? Yeah. And this and this and this is no knock to y'all because if I get into something, I'm not calling one of my friends. I call the police. Mm -hmm. We pay y'all. We we use y'all. But you know we do. I'm we, fin remedial, oh, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Remedial training. Mm -hmm. We actually go back and we retrain. We go back and also, anytime we have this, we always go back and look at our policy, to make yes. sure that it's not a policy violation. Yes. Versus. Uh, versus just a bad act. Yes, okay, yes. so you want to always make sure your policies are current. Yes. And you want to also want to make sure that your policy or, or what's best practices at the time. Yes. So in every case where we have a, 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 a complaint of officer misconduct, mm -hmm. we look at the misconduct. We also investigate the policy to make sure that the policy and procedure is not out of line with what our practices happen yes. to be out in the field. Yes. And of course, if, if there's a practice issue in the field, then we move to correct the practice act, uh, action in the field. If it is a policy failure, then we move to correct the policy so that we have it. Okay. And we take the appropriate action administrative move. action as well as criminal action Legal if we action. believe criminal. Yes. Okay. So, so in the officer, in the, in the case of Officer Don, who is back on the street, what action was that? What, mm -hmm. Was there any like violation to y'all's procedure? Because it was some type of punishment there. We we talking about the extent so, uh, of as, the punishment. As I said, so 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 we did take administrative action, and I have to leave it. I can't share his. Action. Okay, of course, I can't of course, share his course, disciplinary course, file with of you. Of course, but that but that's why we out here protesting right okay. now. This is not Minneapolis, but we do want people to be held accountable. We want the officers to hold each other accountable. It was it was three officers right there. You know what I mean? That I couldn't. I me and personally, then, I couldn't imagine that. dying like that. I know you couldn't either. That's that's a nightmare. That's right. You know, so we got to have better cops. And y'all do have that's, very that's, fine yeah. cops. I got friends who are cops looking forward to talk to out here. You know what I mean? It's, it's only a few bad apples. We got to start disciplining them, and disciplining them to correctly. The zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. That should be so, zero tolerance as far as that, that type of... But, so, but but moving forward, we I guess me, myself, I, I don't live here, but I will try to actually bridge the gap. We need to try to sit down, have some police officers, have some community action, and, which y'all do, but we need a bigger turnout. So it's on us, the community, that, to, to, to hold each other accountable also. Hey, Chief. Hey, what's going on? Um, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? Listen, one of the things that, 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 that stuttering is that the fact that some of the police officers have relationships with the DA office. Mm, and down, down. That allows them the opportunity to go into the DA's office with a signed warrant, with no evidence, with no sworn statements, but not anything to corroborate the charge that they want to levy against an individual. It has happened. I've seen it happen time and time again. And this type of, you know, protocol, is that the protocol that's supposed to happen for an individual to have a warrant issue for them, picked up, charged, there's no evidence that the crime actually happened. But here in this incident, we see the crime happening on video. And these officers have not been charged yet. And we see a lot of them. That, but it's this instance that's got us to this point. Mm -hmm. so, and so that, that, type, that type of procedure there and, and that protocol, can you address that and, and say what changes can we look forward to in the future? Because when they go into the DA's office to get a warrant signed, all they're doing is saying, hey, listen, this person had a theft of property in 1985. 
and it's 2020, and now they got another charge that we want to levy against them. So uh, let me try to. First of all, I can't speak for the DA's office, but I can do is this. Okay, we can't, you know, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. I can't speak for the DA's office. I don't run the DA's you office. But, 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 <laughs> nah, I'm not going to speak in the full form. Uh, but what I can say is this here, is it would be unreasonable to expect anybody to work with somebody every day and develop some type of relationship. But I would think that the integrity of who I am as a person and who they are as individuals would say, hey, what the facts are or what the facts are. And in most cases, in most cases, you ask the question about somebody being told. The, the officer that had his knee on the... George's neck has been charged. He, he, he was charged with uh, murder in the third degree. So you got to think about this. So everybody wants to say that's wrong, but you have to understand what are the elements of the crime. I'm not an attorney, but I can tell you. Listen, if you want to answer, you got to listen. You got to be willing to listen. It's not what you saw and what you know is what you can prove. And can you prove that it was the intent of that officer. Yeah, he, he was, was smiling. Yeah, I th I th I he was smiling, what you think. Yeah, like, No, you see him smiling. 527. He probably shouldn't have said that. What are you what? Listen, listen, me? listen. Listen to me. I've done this job for over 30 years. Black, it, 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 yeah, as you as you as a black man, are you tired of this shit? Let, let, speak, let, speak, let, speak, let, let, let us speak. Let us speak. Let us Let him give you the answer. Let him give you the answer. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm raising my hand. So what I'm trying to tell so what I'm trying to tell you is this year. When you go to trial, the judge will 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 will, will rule will read the the charge. And if in the, when he reads the charge, he will talk about the elements of the crime. And when you go to trial, if when when they send it to the jury, they say if one of the elements of the crime have not been met, then potentially you could you could have probable cause to not convict. Remember, when you have a jury of twelve people. You have a jury of 12 people. You don't need but one person. Don't, let me finish before you start talking. So did anybody in this group research what murder in the third degree is? I, I did. I, no, I ain't asking you because you asked questions. I'm asking anybody else. Did anybody else ask research it? What's murder? Say what now? Non-intentional. So which one do you think is easier to prove? The third or the first? The first in this case. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was very intense. Well, you can only talk to you. 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 Let me finish out to my question. To my question. To my point, Chief. Now, here is the issue. We've got the arrest warrant signed. We've got the individual arrested. We've got a bond made. We've got jail time that had to be done. We've got a record. We've got mugshot. And we go to court. And there's no evidence to prove that the warrant should have been signed in the beginning. Mm -hmm. See, now, now you got an individual that spent a thousand dollars off the of work, a black man mm -hmm. that lives in a different world than a white man. Because this is truly a black and white issue. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not. I agree. You've got an inconvenient individual that may have lost a job have lost income, and taken through a system that should not have happened in the beginning. Now you got somebody that didn't pay the light bill. They've got to result to something else in order to try to make that happen, to rectify something that should not have been imputed upon them. My question again is how do we police that process to make sure that process is fair for everyone? Because when you go to Metro, and I go in there, you know who I am behind this mask. Mm -hmm. When you go to Metro, 90% of the people that I'm talking to look like me. Amen. Don't tell me that oh, there's only 10% of white people mm -hmm. that do crime or accused of a crime and had to be arrested until they prove that they were innocent. Yes. So this is my concern, Chief, and, and it starts with the police department. Why? Because the police has to make the arrest. They drive through the And if they don't make the arrest, arrest, then the arrest never happens. The incarceration but when I do 20, when I do 26 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour speed zone, 
and there's a white cop on the corner. He pulled me over and gave me a ticket simply because I'm black. Mm -hmm. When a white person do 35 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone, they get a tap on the shelf. What you say? This is life as we live. In Mobile, I was in In all states. All around the world. This is the life that we live. And, and all, I'm, all I'm asking, Chief, is that three. Can we depend on you? To make Making change. policy change. Exactly. Because the policies were created in a boardroom with people that don't look like me. In Montgomery, Alabama. And they were made to circumvent and hold down people that do look like me. Because this is a life changing event. Let them help. So what I'll tell you is what I've always done. I've always looked at issues we're, we're that just affect our community. And I'll look at these issues. Okay. The things that you brought, brought before me today. Okay. Uh, you you yes, I appreciate sir. that. Chief Batiste, I, I ran into you one day at the Dollar General. Excuse me, young man. You didn't hit me. You didn't hit me. Thank you. Your so much. You remember that day? And I, and I glimpsed at you. I said, is that the chief with a hoodie on? Now, you could have been easily mistaken for any common black man in this city that gets arrested or victimized or accused of crimes just because they wear a hoodie like Trayvon Martin. Okay, now I'm very involved in my city. I travel to Montgomery when they're making policies and rules. I've ran into you in the hallways. Uh, also, uh, uh, public relations director, uh, Chief Barber, and I know what's going on behind the scenes. This prison population, it is geared to lock up African American black males. It's a $900 million a year investment. We live here on this beautiful Gulf Coast where it's a billion dollar industry for the tourist, tourism industry. And our people are being treated like cattle. You black like I am. I raised twin boys as a single mother and they're very successful young black men. And I care about every brother and I want to thank every white person out here right now. God bless you for, for standing up on our behalf and having a heart to stand up with us, okay? Right. These matters are not going to change. The judges, the lawyers, the prosecutors, everybody hooked up with the fine life of living because of the monies that get kicked back under the table. We know $900 million is a lot of money. We're reaping the harvest from poor working people that have to pay their life bill, suffer the consequences if they're pulled over on some bull crap arrest. We, I know judges, lawyers, snort powder just like anybody else. So let's just tell it like an IS is. We've got a pandemic going on all over this country. God is not pleased on how we're treating one another. And if it takes killing us all, taking this whole planet off the map, then that may have to happen. Until we can learn how to love, respect, each other. Everybody, Everybody brings something to the table. Whether you white, whether you're black, whether you're Asian, no matter what color, we're all God's people. Each other. Everybody, Everybody brings something to the table. Whether you white, whether you're black, whether you're Asian, no matter what color, we're all God's people. And we should not be victimized over things that are minuscule, that are things that are just materialistic when it comes cold. down to yeah. the beauty of this saying. planet, That's which really boils down to can we breathe, just like George Floyd, the air is free. Okay, so if the birds aren't chirping, if the bees aren't flying, if the flowers aren't blooming, we don't matter to me. It's nothing. Nothing is worth it. The yachts, the big fine homes, all of that is nothing if we can't live on a planet where we can breathe fresh air. God is not pleased. We are black people. We are beautiful people. We help build this nation, build this country. Our blood, sweat, and tears. I visit plantations. I go over right here in Malvis. There's a whole plant. There's plenty of plantation houses around this city. We help build this city and we deserve the respect. We deserve Deserve the respect and the appreciation for our ancestors. Right, and we've My just been listening family. there to what um, what appears to be an impromptu town hall. Yeah, and Chief Lawrence Batiste there talking directly to demonstrators about their frustrations. The young woman that you were talking about there, just to look at numbers, uh, talking about the disparities in incarceration. And according to the NAACP, African Americans make up. 
of the correctional population. And, and she was talking about how do you fix that, uh, saying that it's a collaborative effort and the chief, as you saw there, listening 